would uh, please bow your heads and have the uh, commissioner's invitation. Most gracious Heavenly Father, the source of our life, the source of our living, we ask that you bless the citizens of Harris County and bless this commission as we try and do things that are acceptable in your sight. We are so appreciative, O oh Lord, of the beauty of the county in which we get, we call home and of all of the good things that happen here. We thank you for those who volunteer for charitable things in all sorts, and those who do volunteer work for the county, as well as our employees who, who work endless and tirelessly to perform good service to their fellow citizens. We ask, O oh Lord, that you be with all of us, bless us, keep us, and help us to do your work. We ask in Christ's name. Amen. I'd now like to call on um, uh, Juvenile Court Judge Joey Loudermill, former commissioner, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, you have um, in your packets uh, minutes from our regular session of September the 18th. The minutes for the work session, the comprehensive plan update from the 18th, and also the uh, planning session of the Board of Commissioners on September the 26th. Is there a motion? I move it on the approved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Motion carries. Any citizens? Yes, sir. In the old business. I have one time. Yes, ma'am. And this will be a brand new uh, project of work. There's nothing new to report on the whole drive thing in here. Okay. So I'm out of trouble now. New business uh, on the agenda was uh, Belva Dorsey for Enrichment Services program update, and she was not able to be here tonight. So we then skip to the next one, which is the uh, bid award for the airport entrance road. Uh, Alan? Mr. Chairman, Board Commissioners, this was a budgeted item in the current budget under the airport department um, to pay the access road to the airport. So bids were requested. We did get three responses in. You can see those in your agenda items. Um, bids have been reviewed and evaluated by POD. They were here to deduct to give her a presentation. Um, the funding, the low bid was $439,867.74. It is slightly above what was budgeted. Um, $325,000 was budgeted. Um, but due to petroleum price increase, asphalt price increase, and workman increases, that was somewhat expected. So the overage of about $115,000 will also come from these funds. So this is a budgeted pro project from these funds. Um, the contract will have 90 days to complete about late December. If everything goes well, we have good weather. And uh, we have Hugh Weaver here, Vice President of Pond, Christine Schultz, Project Manager, to answer any questions the board may have on this particular project. Hugh, you, is there anything y'all want to say in particular? Uh, this, this project is, is important because um, right now the road is a gravel service road and this will put an all-weather surface on it so it is, is usable in all conditions. But more importantly, it will reduce the migration of gravel from the roadway surface to the airfield where gravel and aircraft don't mix very well. We've had some, some damage done to some aircraft as a result of gravel. So this is a very, very important project for the airport. Any 
questions from commissioners? Is there a motion? I want a motion that it be approved. Is there a vote for a big one? A motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. All right, any discussion? All in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Motion carries. Okay, the next is uh, also deals with the airport and pond. Uh, Randy, is anything you want to sell that one? Yes, Mr. Commissioner, uh, Mr. Chairman, Board Commissioners. Again, this is a related uh, process. Um, it is recommended that we approve task order number eight with PON for them to supervise the construction of the airport access road to make sure the entrance road is built for their design, to answer questions from the contractor, approve pay requests, um, have the pre um, the pre construction meetings, the final construction meetings, make sure all the problems are done and solved, and there's no issues. So I'm recommending that we approve task order number eight for forty four thousand nine forty eight to make sure this road is uh, built properly and approve the design. Any They're in the professional services account. I can remember right. Kevin from Tees Blast. Yes. There is no GDOT funding on this project in any form. It's all T-Sponsor. All right, is there a motion? I move we enter into task order number eight as before us. Is there a second? I'll second it. Discussion. And, this, and this, both these projects should be done in the next 90 days. So by Christmas, we could be writing on a nice paper. Okay. It's too cold. <laughs> Only authorized vehicles do have a code to get past the heavy security gate. As of today? As of today, because phase one has been completed as of today. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? All in favor, signify by raising your hand. Opposed? Okay. Okay, uh, next is the airport capital improvement plan uh, revised. Well, yeah. Mr. Chairman, Board of Commissioners, while uh, on in turn is coming, um, the board approved back in June of this year the the master plan for the airport, the five-year master plan of what the airport's going to look like in five or ten years. So we won't, if we don't, if we don't have a master plan, then we might build something that we might not need in the future or on land that we need for something else. So a good plan is a good roadmap to make sure there is no, uh, there's a lot of efficiency and there is no uh, issues of using, using uh, not building it properly. So, contained within the airport master plan is a five-year CIP. It was approved by the board in June, but it was really aggressive, and in my opinion, <coughs> going through the budget process, unaffordable. So, Pond has gone back, revised the, the five-year CIP in order to make it affordable and make what we need the, in the time frame that we need it. So I'm going, with that prefacing, I'm going to give it to the airport experts. Thank you, Randy. And, and as, as you put so, so eloquently, the master plan is where we assess the existing conditions at the airport. We forecast using uh, some buffalo hide and bones and crystal ball what the, the needs are for the future for the airport what improvements need to be made, what maintenance items need to be done to keep the, the airport functioning. That develops a list of projects. This exercise is an attempt to decide how to eat the elephant. Uh, you know, if, if funds were no limit, and Randy says all the time that money's no object, so, right? That is not what I said. That is not what you said. 
it's been nice working with you. Today. So, uh, the, uh, we, we have to decide how we can maintain uh, our obligations of operating a functional airport as well as growing it in time for that future aircraft demand that's coming. So this, and I'm, I hope all of you have uh, the, the CIP in front of you in your packets, because uh, otherwise it will, Harry, please uh, cover your right eye and read from the bottom line. Um, and and I, I will apologize to both Jim and Randy because you've already endured this once uh, at the yeah. airport committee meeting, so it's, it's, it's a bit recycled. But this is the list of projects that are in the, the forecast 20-year airport master plan. Uh, they, they are of, of different natures of expansion as well as safety and security as well as um, operations and maintenance of the airport. We've then taken and looked at, at each of, and I'll, I'll walk us through the five years uh, that, that we have to forecast the future. The state asks us to prepare this so that they can prepare and position for funds that we, the county, can prepare and position our budgets to accommodate these projects as well as seek out other grants and funding sources so that when the time comes, we have the ability to, to uh, work, work on these projects. So uh, we have to begin this story with a reimbursement for hangar site work design and construction because the first thing everybody's going to see is a really large number. There's um, $633,000 and six, $630,681 that is a holdover in the IOU from Georgia DOT and, and the Federal Aviation Administration for work that's already been done at the airport. It's the hangars and the, the, the taxi lanes. Those, those projects were advanced uh, and the, the feds and the state have said as funding is available, we will reimburse you for those amounts. And currently, the outstanding reimbursement is $633,681. So that, that shows up at, at the bottom of the table down here. We call it a deficit, but that's just kind of, think of it as, as the, uh, the FAA and states IOU. Um, we're yes, sir. I have a couple of questions. Yes, ma'am. Please. Uh, has that already been submitted? That's already been paid out and, and done, yes. No, 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 no. no. I'm talking about the reimbursement. So I'm going to explain that to you. The, the, what the feds say is you can use, well, let me back up. So the, the funding that is available to Harris County for the airport, it, it, it constitutes three different funding sources that we're going to show. The federal cost, uh, which is through the Airport Improvement Program, uh, which is through the Airports and Airways Trust Fund. Uh, it, it affords you $150,000 a year in general aviation entitlements. That's money that is set aside as an appropriation for each of the 103 airports in the state of Georgia to be utilized for your capital projects. So there is, there is that funding. There is a state program that has 75-25 money, that 75% state and 25%. The only federal funds that are available to reimburse that is your 150,000. So if you don't do any other improvements, you can buy down that 633 by $150,000. So if we do nothing for four and a half years, we'll have that, that deficit completely reimbursed. The problem is there are operation and maintenance things that need to be done. Uh, there are expansions to accommodate growth that we need to be, that need to be done. And so this is a plan on how do we work toward getting that reimbursement done, while at the same time fulfilling obligations. An easy one as an example is we have um, item number ten: remark runway and apron, uh, and the um, I'm looking for the crack seal project. Um, help me out. 11. 11. 11. So the, there's an existing taxiway that we are under an obligation that, well, the federal, we took federal funds to build that taxiway. We have to optimize its life. So resealing the cracks and keeping the surface in good condition is something that we agreed to do as part of the grant assurances. So 
that that's something that is time sensitive. We can't just put it off five years. So we're, we're trying to come up with a plan that works its way toward getting that reimbursement <coughs> while... Has it been, have, what have you done toward receiving anything? Uh, well, we, 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 you are entitled to $150,000 oh, here. That. I get all that. Yes. But that so, 633 has been approved for oh, reimbursement. Yes. But, We're waiting right. for the funds to come in. But that's all, that's all, so that's all been approved. Okay. By the yes. Fed. So, that's been so yes. we will get that money. Yes. We will get it. The question is when. Okay, that was going to be my next question. Any idea? Well, it, it, what they tell you is. And, and I'll try to use an analogy. If they had 150, they'd say, "Here's 150 thousand dollars. You can either use it for a new project, or be, or, or put it to pay, pay down what we've already owed you." So any additional work we do delays that that reimbursement of the ultimate 630. Hence, back in June, the schedule was too aggressive, too many projects. It front loaded the the county and during the. And, and a front row of the county to make us to force the county to advance county funds to get reimbursed later, where we're already 633000 in the hole waiting for reimbursement. Hence, the more less aggressive schedule targeting only needed maintenance, i.e., crack seal and finish the fence project. And and then, and then to go even further, because Hugh and I have gone over this over and over to whittle it down for affordability. And uh, in, tw in the year 2020, which is next fiscal year, there's nothing on the schedule to do. That's so that we can catch to, back to keep, up to, on to that next allotment of 150000 okay. Is it possible to go through, and we don't have, I don't have, y'all may have, a copy of the one we approved in June. Is it possible when you go through here that you can tell us what has been, because I have no idea yes, uh, what was on the one in June. There's no possible human, human way that I could remember. So if you go through here, can you tell us what's been pared down? I can't, well, let, let me qualify. We haven't pared down as it relates to removing any projects that were in the master plan. We've just reorganize them in when, when they are okay. done. Can you, can you tell us that? Yes, ma'am. So, and, and that's that's part of this. So, what you see here is this is fiscal year 2019. This is your fiscal 2020. This is fiscal year 2021. And we'll, we'll, when we get out there, we've got fiscal year 22, 23, 24, and then 25 through 27. So, Basically, it had everything really in the first three years. This this total uh, million two four. It was about six million dollars worth of construction in in a three year period. Okay, can you tell us what's been pushed out? Yes, you get where I'm coming from. I'm oh, yeah, not sure. It's not the drawer. I get oh no no. no this, this is okay. this is what this is for. So. But um, I have questions about. Can you tell me what's been pushed out? Mm -hmm. So, okay. we're going to take a break in a minute. Yes, All right. Go ahead and answer that. All right. So, the, the let, let me tell you, I guess the best way is to say what is in for 2019. We are going to complete, uh, or we recommend that we complete the, the security fencing project. That's a, a wildlife fence. Right now, we have half of it done, which we have a dam, if you will, that now the wildlife are coming on the airport and only the really smart ones get around the fence to keep going. So we have a project, it's a total funding of $475,000 um, to, to do the, the fencing uh, and the state has uh, agreed to do a, a federal grant at the 95 and 5 funding of that. So we'll put $150,000, that entitlement funds, to it a project to do the runway length justification study. That's a $15,000 project. Um, that's really building the story, building the justification for why a runway may be needed. The, the answer in that study may be 
there isn't an extension needed. But that is the first step toward all of these other developments that we think we will need in the, in the master plan. So when we get down here and start talking about the environmental assessment, runway extension, runway rehabilitation, those, the funding will only come with a successful completion of this justification study. So, yes sir. Stop here. All right. And, uh, we'll, as soon as we have the public hearing, then we'll be <coughs> Yeah.
carefully. Um, our kids, our grandchildren love our farm. Uh, it is a source of pleasure for our Atlanta family and others when, when they come down. And we want to guard our time there. But at the same time, we want to be able to uh, run some commercial quail hunts, and et cetera, which I'll get into, to help offset some of the costs of the farm. But I think that we've been good stewards of the property, and we want to continue to be that. But we would like to open it up uh, for, the, for some commercial endeavors, which would be uh, our desire to have some commercial quail hunts, some pheasant tower shoots, along with fishing and other passive activity. Um, our kids, too, um, we do things. Uh, this weekend, this Saturday, we'll have hopefully a hundred or so of our church families out to have some fishing fun. Uh, we've done um, Young Life Tower Shoots, raising money for the middle school ministry of Young Life. Uh, we've enjoyed that for nine years, doing that at our property. And recently, because we have not had commercial insurance, have not needed it, uh, and Young Life has got a new CEO from the corporate world, um, they have um, required more of me than I could deliver, and I'm thankful that my friend Joey Loudonough has built a tower at their farm, and, and they're doing that now. But our kids care about others, and they would love to see us perhaps do some things like some wounded warrior hunts and so forth like that. That would probably be for turkey, uh, maybe even deer, but it would be uh, chaperone, uh, close. Uh, and we are all about safety at our farm, um, just to say that. But as I said, we want to just go about it carefully. Uh, we want to balance our time with that of hunting time. And so it is not the most important thing to us that we maximize profit, but that we do it uh, right and give everybody a good experience when they come there. Um, it has been, our farm, a, commer a commercial quail hunting preserve for well over 40 years. Uh, Callaway Gardens had it. They actually uh, raised quail. John Sale, up he recently passed away, but John and Irene Sale, they still live right behind us on Fold Bridge Road on a property that Callaway gave them. But John was the, the guy for years. He and Irene lived in the little lodge. You go by driveway on the right, uh, home built in 66. They lived there for quite some time. Anyway, good people. Uh, I know John, maybe before we're through here tonight, will tell you a little bit more about John Sale and some of the history uh, that that entails. But um, so when, when Callaway eventually got out of that, uh, my friend Floyd Clements and his father Sonny ran a quail hunting preserve called Llewellyn's Point. And uh, it was very successful. And when we eventually, as you know, World Children's Center uh, purchased the property and me, I'm a realtor. I've been involved in real estate in Columbus and in Florida for many years. Well, I had been looking for two years for a property such as this, and, and one day I was riding down the road on Highway 18, and I saw the sign shortly after they had been put up, and it was everything I had hoped for, the way it lay and the water and so forth. So, so we purchased it. Floyd and Sonny were running the quail preserve for two years. Uh, they continued to run the quail preserve because I didn't want to push Floyd out. And Floyd is a, a, a still a friend, but he got started in the real estate business and now I think he's doing very well with it. So uh, he moved on to that and then our kids and our family had the whole thing. At any rate, that's just a little history. Um, so our property is perfect for quail hunting. It uh, learned recently is the northernmost county in Georgia that has good quail habitat. I expect it will draw tourism into uh, Pine Mountain and Hamilton in our area. Uh, I think that 
Atlanta is such a is such a natural thing. It's just so close and easy. And yesterday I was telling a friend I was eating at Johnny's Pizza by the Slice, and uh, I was telling a young friend who's a contractor about what we were doing. He'd seen the signs, and he uh, he was saying, you know, I'd like to be a guy <laughs> and and work some up there, and he's. He would be great because he's got a personality like John does, and he's a people person. And, he, and also, I hope that'll work out. But when we got up to leave, a young man was listening. Uh, a young man, he's my age, but um, Tommy, Tommy said to me, "I overheard the conversation, and I want you to let me know when y'all start this." And uh, I said, "You bet I will." But um, anyway, I expect it will be a draw. And, I've spoken with our adjoining neighbors. I've spoken and I have met, or either at least talked to, I've tried to meet. Uh, I knew a few, but I have spoken with every adjoining neighbor, or at least met with them, that adjoins our property. Everyone has been supportive. The only one that I could not reach was Joe Rogers, uh, Land Venture South, or whatever it is. I just could not get through to him. Uh, as you know, he owns the gun club and, and much else. But every neighbor has been supportive, and I think that y'all find six or seven letters of uh, support from our neighbors. Um, so, in, a, in addition to the commercial activities, I mentioned the uh, uh, we do some pheasant tower shoots and perhaps some deer for wounded warriors. But the the uh, we, we will do, to give you an idea of the traffic, I guess. Floyd had, he used, we have 466 acres, and <coughs> tonight I'm gonna ask that be amended to 464 points something because we need to carve out our kennel, and that will stay uh, A1, and the rest of it will be cord. So that is an amendment, we all should have copies of the survey. But I will say, uh, to give you an idea, Floyd Clements, when he was <coughs> on our property, plus it's 106 acres on the north side of the 18, we're only concerning ourselves with the acres on the south side. But when Floyd had the property, and I know because we were out there a lot, and, and Floyd guided us many times, but he would he would run sometimes six, seven hunts at a time. And, you know, there's uh, a little bit of traffic there. It, it was never, uh, I ever thought, um, too much. but. I feel like what we want to do, we're not using the north side. I think the most we would ever do at one time would be like um, maybe two hunts, uh, two morning hunts or two afternoon hunts, but you're talking about, even if everybody brought their own automobiles, you're talking about four guys <laughs> coming up there. Now, like this weekend with our church, we'll have some more people. Tower shoots, we have maybe six tower shoots a year, so. And if we do those paid power shoes, we maybe, we could do uh, 28 uh, hunters, um, and, and that would be it. And I don't imagine that they would all come in separate cars either. But as far as impact on our roadways and all, I don't think it would be a, a big deal. And even our power shoes, when you're shooting 12 gauge shotguns, we insist that they go no, long, no lower than five shots. So the shot is not carry far. And of course we make sure it's safe, high protection, and so forth. Um, let me see. Traffic impact I've spoken about. Um, I will say Chad uh, spoke to uses and I believe um, he used an arbitrary figure of 400 feet uh, buffer, vegetated buffer. We would like to reduce that to 100 foot. We will have, no foot. 100 foot. We have plenty of vegetated buffer. We have plenty of it. But our uh, barn would be within that 400 foot limit. And, uh, you know, so, so we would like to ask for an amendment on that uh, from 400 feet to 100 feet. Um, and let's see. Other than that, you've got a survey of our kennel, and we carved out two acres 
which would reduce um, the total area we'd like under Ford from 466.17 to 464.17. Um, and in addition to that, I know y'all have plenty of questions, but in addition to that, uh, we were made aware and we will certainly comply um, with the special use permits for hunting, fishing, lodging. Um, I have uh, <coughs> looked into a little bit about what would be required for lodging. The little house that you come up our driveway from Hamilton Pleasant Road on the right, built in 66, it is a funky floor plan and it's um, not any place I'd really like to put a guess. But we have a plan that we could convert that to a three bedroom, two bath, and it'd be kind of nice. And it's kind of attractive anyways, it sits up there. But, uh, so we'd like to one day, uh, when we feel like that it is showing some sort of profit, spend the money on um, bringing that up to speed and, and having lodging. Because a lot of our guests would like to come to an afternoon hunt and spend the night we could cater some food in, and they could do a, um, a morning hunt. Uh, and, and that's just how a lot of people work. So we hope it'll attract families and so forth. Uh, Chad, and when we went before the Planning Commission, um, he said, let's keep it at six bedrooms. And Chad, I would also, uh, y'all, I would like to ask y'all to consider eight bedrooms instead of six, and I'll tell you why. If we do lodging, um, and we may carve out an area in the future for a cottage, and if we did that, we think we could have possibly four people here, four, four separate bedrooms here, and bedrooms here, where hunters could come up like men and have their own bedrooms. Because typically there's four hunters that go quail hunting. And we just think it would be good. And so we just ask you to consider uh, if this passes, that y'all would do that for us. <coughs> At this point, um, I know y'all have some questions and just love to hear whatever. I just come in. Sure. You mentioned the special use for your hunting, and yes. fishing, but you're aware that you need the special use for the kennel also. I forgot to say that. Okay, I just wanted to make it sure is you here understood. somewhere. That's it's, a separate yeah, process. Thank you, Becky. Yeah, it is here, and uh, and absolutely we do. And I need I need a business license and all that stuff. We want to okay. do. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> what was the reason in the initial application that you requested the four hundred foot <coughs> buffer? The four hundred foot buffer? Yeah, I was just wondering why the. Well, uh, Chad was yeah. the one that just kind of sent that out arbitrarily. I believe it was on the application. I've just gotten myself confused while I was on. Yeah. No, I yeah. think just what, what ended up happening um, I'll let John is, is I've created a, a wooded buffer around the property so when you're driving, say, on 18, you can't see into it because if you know quail land, it's open. And though we hate it, you know, there's always you know potential poachers and things like that. So we'd like them not to see any property. In addition to just having protection for shot and stuff like that, just traveling out. So uh, I had said that, that the minimum we have on that boundary is 100 yards, and so which is 300 feet. And I think, you know, Chad, I'll let Chad speak for himself. I think, you know, um, he had thought I said 400 feet, so I was going to But uh, I think that's what ended up happening. Just curious. Yeah, that's We just like to provide protection you know, for us and for others. Well, I think that's, that's the point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you would rather have a 100-foot buffer than you just said 100 yards. We, we have one. Okay. Correct. Um, that's what we have is, is a 100-yard boundary around, and we kind of keep wooded. Uh, and that's the minimum. Some places it's probably 135 yards plus. Some places it's larger than that. Um, that's just what we've kind of taken on to, to do on our own. Um, and I think what Claude was talking about, you have places like a lodge and some other areas where, you know, it's it's difficult to get that large of a buffer. 
of education. And we're not going to be hunting around blood and barn anyway. But it would, uh, with Chad's uh, um, 400 feet, we couldn't make that because on Hamilton Pleasant Grove Road, say our barn is closer. Ma'am, what does the green delineate? So the green delineate, that's the area that we would be quail hunting. And I, completely my fault, I had you guys another map with a buffer on the, the south portion there, uh, on the bottom. Uh, and well, that's okay. I, I had I six children, and I completely <laughs> forgot to print it out as I was leaving. So that is my fault. We have it uh, available. I can uh, send it via email. No, uh, that's I just didn't know what those particular lines meant. Yeah, that sure. just, that sure. just a, that's the area that we will actually be quailing. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, are there any citizens here who wish to speak in favor of this application? Yes, sir. Uh, please come forward and state your name and your address. My name is Dick Bogle, and I live at 8705 Georgia, Highway 18, 2.2 miles from the proposed operation. And I've lived there um, about 20 years. I've owned the place for about 25 years. And when I was growing up, the Callaway Shooting Preserve was a great attraction. It's still, it could be again, and I think that, that the proposed project would be um, good for the county uh, in terms of traffic, uh, sales tax revenue, more C spots, boss money, um, and I don't know how much it's going to generate in, in other ancillary activities, but it should do some. But I've, I've known Claude and his family for a number of years, um, church going, uh, experienced Christian folks, matters to me, and I think they'd be good sponsors for the uh, for the proposed project, and I, I would recommend approval. But, and and uh, anyway, thank y'all. Thank you, Mr. Bogle. Anyone else wish to speak in support? Avery. <clears throat> I'm Hal Avery. I live at 2170 Avery Road, Mountain. Um, we have a farm that's about three miles from this area. Uh, we use it privately uh, in the same manner that he's intended to use his commercially. Uh, I don't think anybody could possibly have any sort of objection to what he's planning on doing. I certainly don't. And nobody's ever objected to me doing what I'm doing. So I recommend it hard. I think everybody needs to try it. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. My name is Richard Stevens. I live probably the closest neighbor. I'm about a quarter of a mile down Pole Bridge Road. Um, I have no problem with this as far as my residence. Uh, I don't think it'll make a big difference in traffic. But I will admit, I got a little nervous when you said eight bedrooms and talking about people from Atlanta and all that. <laughs> um, you know, that's not my idea of what it was. And having said that, I've known this man a long time, and I know he's a man of integrity. So if he says it's going to be a small deal, then I'm all for it. Thank you, Mr. Stevens. Anyone else wish to speak in favor? Uh, Joel and I'm up at 1186 uh, Mayor Road in uh, Chairman and members of the commission, uh, I've known uh, Paul Scarborough for a long time. And I agree with what Mr. Stevens said. He's a man of integrity. I have the utmost respect for him and what he says he's going to really go to. Um, I have uh, been hunting on this place uh, a number of times. I've seen the, uh, the way the land is treated and how the land is managed. That's an excellent job. <laughs> plans that he outlined uh, as far as uh, for quelling and that sort of thing. I've been to a number of quail plantations, particularly in South Georgia, and his plans are consistent with uh, what a lot of quail plantations do. Um, it's 
So uh, I've uh, known Paul for a long time. He's a good man, and uh, I urge uh, approval of this uh, application for the uh, code for the uh, core zone. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Larimer. Anyone else who wishes to speak in favor? Anyone else? Okay. And anyone here that wishes to speak against? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> we went through this in the planning commission. I feel like I'm a fit sitter, but <laughs> beg your pardon for people that heard me at the planning commission. I'm going to kind of just go back to my notes and I appreciate sure. everything. We, we can bear with me. First, I want to thank the county commission. Oh, I'm Debbie Bailey. I'm sorry. I currently live on at 9060 Highway 315 in Catala, Georgia. However, I am in the process of building a home a little less than a mile on Huckle Church Road around the corner from this property. I want to thank all of you for serving the county. You've done a wonderful job. My husband and I have lived here for 25 years, so I know you've done a good job. Currently, um, I live in Catala, but I've always wanted to live in Pine Mountain. Unfortunately, about five years ago, I found the ideal property on Huckle Church Road. We made a pasture on part of it and now have a healthy flock of sheep. We've since started building our home and how hope to be in by the end of the year. It is our dream coming true. Nothing more beautiful to me than being out in the pasture at first light, quietly working my dogs, moving the sheep around. It's peace, truly experiencing the beauty of God's work firsthand. Our property is just around the corner from Mr. Scarborough's land. We want to be good neighbors and expect the same in return. The application I read originally was somewhat vague. I learned more at the Planning Commission and I've learned more this evening. Hunting and fishing seem a natural fit for this tract of land but it is the continuous firing of guns that is my concern. So of course I'm considering the worst case scenario. The track is listed as 400 acres, but not really the right perspective because many of the planned shooting activities that I saw on the diagram were close to the edge of the land. So buffers do come into consideration. Please know I am not against the lawful use of guns. We own guns. I've shot many rounds of skeet in my years, but never hunted. It's the idea of a commercial entity offering skeet shooting or any type of firing range in a rural area that raise the alarm. Quiet enjoyment <coughs> is utmost when someone chooses to live in Harris County. We are making a lifetime investment on Hopewell Church Road. Building a home, a farm, keeping our dogs, raising our livestock, all of which would be greatly affected by the continuing firing of weapons. Not hunting, but the skeet shooting and the, and the clay shooting. Again, I'm not suggesting that hunting in the area shouldn't continue as it has for decades. The personal use of rural land is not the issue here. It's the commercial promotion of shooting and the noise that comes with it. Doing just a basic internet search on noise and skeet shooting, many stories came up about neighbors, lawsuits, complaints, and their county life ruin. In my opinion, it can become a big business. It can be firing every day. A shotgun blast is quite high on the decibel chart and carries a fair distance. <coughs> Many of the farms surrounding the proposed activities have horses, cows, sheep, dogs, and families farming and trying to enjoy their county life. There are several large tracks near us that have been leased for hunting. You can hear a single shot or two or three during hunting season, but that is a rare occasion. People enjoying their hobbies and making very little disruption for their residents. As neighbors, we can cope with these rare events. I want everyone to enjoy their land and their hobbies, but think it only fair to ask they be mindful of their neighbor's animals and the peace and quiet. I did attend the planning committee's meeting on the zoning request. At the meeting, I shared these concerns and was comforted by the committee's comments. They showed great understanding. I believe they stipulated something to the effect that there was to be no commercial skeet or trap shooting and that the buffer be a minimum of 400 feet. After the meeting was over, Mr. Scarborough, the landowner, came up to assure me they had no plans of operating a commercial skeet or clay range, and that the hunting activities they are planning would be minimally disruptive. His comments were reassuring, and I'm not here to question his integrity because his, his history speaks for itself. But I felt it was important, though, to come today to reiterate the concerns, not just for today or this year, but for many years to come. Once rezoned, this property might change hands and the outlook might change as well. This new zoning without some stipulation could allow for unwanted activities. I am here today to ask you to consider the noise and its impact. We can't afford to make a mistake on the front end of this that could pit neighbor against neighbor or neighbors against the county. 
There are already many cases on the books and other places stemming from skeet shooting type activities set amongst residential development and farms. It's important to learn from their mistakes. We made a method methodical choice on where to move and where to build on the master plan of accounting and development in the area. This particular part <coughs> of the county is quiet and has many beautiful farms with livestock and families. Changing the atmosphere by allowing skeet shooting and noise generated by continuous shooting activities would not be a reasonable outcome for the surrounding residents of our county. Hopefully you will give this careful thought and consider the planning committee's stipulations before deciding what's best for all of us. I appreciate the chance to share my concerns and again, I thank you for your service. Thank you, Ms. Bailey. Anyone else wish to speak in opposition? All right, uh, if I may, just so that you know you want to cover this in, in one of your rebuttal remarks, uh, Mr. Williams, what is the definition of commercial skeet and trap as opposed to what he's, what he's planning? He's only wanting to do quail and pheasant hunts not any kind of skeet range. There is a wobble on the property which is used to, and a wobble is basically a skeet thrower that is used to, for the hunters to, uh, for, to show that they know gun safety, and that is all that it's used for. It is not a skeet range or for commercial so type. My understanding is that, yes, there might be a little bit of increased fire just to assess the capabilities of the hunters uh, I guess to warm up a little bit like an athlete to warm up. But even though they're, I'm assuming these are people that are paying for the privilege of going on a hunt. Right. Uh, so it, it is commercial if you if you have some of that. But it's, I, I'm just, I'm worried a little bit for, you know, we may have an understanding, but for the future, uh, what is the difference? Uh, how do you differentiate? I would say that skeet range is actually throwing from towers, uh, a commercial type would be. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to come from towers, but you're talking about uh, usually stations and, and actually uh, lanes would, would provide the, the shoot for if it was for uh, either for skeet or sporting clays are different. They actually come from towers and they're usually stations throughout the woods. He does, he's not doing that either, and trap shooting is another one. And I know nothing about trap. Eric, could I? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, just turn it over to you now and make your okay. that remark in any of your closing remarks. Thank you. Callaway Gun Club, uh, for example, um, when they had the range, it was a skeet shooting range. People had memberships there, or you could go and you could uh, pay to shoot. Um, that's not what we're talking about. As far as the wobble trap, we have a wobble trap and we also have another ski thrower closer to the kennel, of course, aimed into the woods that the boys and we and our friends would enjoy. Not all the time, but we would enjoy. But as we went into um, the idea of a, a fundraiser for the middle school ministry of Young Life, we started Everybody had to shoot at the ski. They had to had to show gun safety, and that's the idea. People like to warm up uh, a little bit before they shoot, but the important thing is we get to look at them and just see. And we haven't hesitated before to pull somebody um, out if they are not being safe. But the whole idea is of it. Everybody just kind of wants to, and not everybody does, but we want to see, we like to see him handle the gun. And, and How many times? Pardon? How many times do they shoot? Uh, probably a couple. Hey, yeah. So it's about three. Yeah. I mean, it, it, we only are allowing over under just because of the safety of the dove. Can say it's kind of only 20 guys. So that's two shots. Yeah. So normally they're like, oh, okay. I mean, you can tell if somebody can handle a firearm. So not 100 times. No, not 100 times. Oh, no. Not 100 times. I think the maximum limit is four. I mean, they'll, 
cycle one and go, oh, if they miss one, they're frustrated. They'll do it again. But you know, we do not intend to um, have any sort of commercial uh, tournaments or um, pay to shoot skeet or, or clays. And I've never even shot sporting clays, but I did go over with my boys and would occasionally go over to the gun club at Cowboy when they were It's fun. But, uh, you know, I can understand um, totally uh, that's a constant, constant noise. Commissioners, any questions? Any other questions? Yes. Good. Um, this land has been basically used this for 40 years. Um, that I'm in favor of it, however, my concern, of course, is that was somebody does changes on a <coughs> period of time. And I mean, there have been too many spot zoning, as far as I'm concerned, for they're going to put Grandma's quilt shop there, and three days later, they have, so you put a commercial, and three days later, it's a for sale sign. Or some, something, sure. you know, very, very similar to that. I sure understand. So, um, they, based upon that, uh, you are willing to put certain restrictions on it? I, I certainly am, uh, Jim. And I also want to say that this property, if you will, is um, it's a legacy for our kids. Uh, we have it, uh, it will go to our grandchildren. And, uh, you know, we have no plans of selling it. Our kids love the farm, and the plan is that it will go to our grandchildren. So, having said that, uh, I asked even at the planning commission when Miss Bailey came up and spoke uh, very well and very emotionally, but I understand. Um, I, I, I even asked the question of the planning commission. If it's possible to put some sort of deed restriction upon resale, you know, I'd certainly be willing to do that. It, when I ask that question at the planning commission meeting, I don't think anybody could really address whether that's possible. But I understand her, and I understand um, where you're coming from. Correct me if I'm wrong, but if we put conditions on this rezoning application, the conditions stay with the land. Correct. They do not, you sell it, Sure, or whatever, okay. it is still tied to the I land. Feel like that's fair. And for that to change, whoever the new owner would be would have to come in and requ request through a rezoning or petition that's to change. The plan so, so there is protection uh, once it's done that it, that it has to stay that way, unless, some, unless yeah. they come in and prove their case. That's, that's fine. Um, just for uh, my, since I always somehow get things a little slightly wrong, we are not dealing with lodging tonight. Or will we deal with lodging? You're dealing yes. with allowing them to do certain, okay. certain okay. conditions, certain okay. number of bedrooms. Maybe change the conditions to allow them to do certain things. Okay. Okay. Yes. To me, as, as the property develops, that may be a fairer way, way to handle it. Well, Martha, would that, uh, would that mean that all these signs that I put up <laughs> will have to be stored and put up again? And, um, <laughs> oh, it's just a lot of signs. Yeah. And if we could address that tonight. Um, but well, if, if I'm just I don't want to. I'm giving you more hey, uh, That's listen, fine. Listen, I, I, you know. Okay. The. the, the Commercial serving of alcohol is completely different. Y'all aren't acting on that at all. Okay, we're not acting it? on that at all. No. Okay, uh, you, you are, um, will, you, will you accept that no lodging can be for, for, for more than seven days? No lodging, no paid lodging for more than seven days. I can't imagine that we would do that. Uh, I can't imagine that anybody, uh, no, we're not running a hotel. Well, that's just to prevent a sure. hotel in the future. Sure. These type of things, more uh, <laughs> over you know, 20 and 30 years to those type of things. Uh, no artificial lighting 
uh, on uh, as far as um, on, on the tower or for no artificial lighting on the range. I guess you should. On the say. range? So you want any night fire? And yeah. Food? Yeah. Okay. yeah no, no, sure. Night fire. I think that's smart. Um, I think that's a smart move. Uh, uh, I just, I did want to say one thing just while we were talking about night firing. It was Shooter's Valhalla that was going to open up at the Callaway Gun Club. Ralph told me that. Or Edward. And, uh, and I said, Edward, um, you're talking, from what I hear you saying, you're talking about training police officers in night firing of automatic weapons? And, and he said, yes. Well, John and I had the two principals. We, Edward shared to me their uh, pro forma, mm -hmm. and, and I called them immediately after leaving Edward. And we had them in my office. They were nice to come. But we, we listened to their whole plan. And we said, guys, it's not a good idea. Nobody wants even the, the thought of shooting them through the night. And he particularly from my automatic weapons too. So we understand that. <laughs> and I'm I'm in favor of a hundred foot day buffer because basically if you have a hundred foot buffer, you can't shoot. Well, I guess you can stand up against it. That, you know, you can't shoot out. Basically, get you're you're three hundred foot from where you can shoot out. Right. Yeah. So that provides lots of safety as far as that goes. Um, and those are the conditions I would like to see put on it. Of course, uh, you know, the, the, it be specified for the recreation use of recreation hunting, commercial, commercial hunting, mm -hmm. and fishing. And we're not the commercial ski and trap. We're not. No. Okay. okay, and no commercial ski and trap. Up to eight bedrooms. To eight lodging rooms? Yes. No, eight people. No? Rooms. Eight rooms. <laughs> I've, I've done that too many times. <laughs> Last fishing trip. Yeah. Eight rooms. Eight rooms, please. Mm -hmm. And our differentiation there, say you have couples that come. So say you have, you know, we're running two hunts at once. There's going to be four individuals on each hunt. If they want to bring their spouses, I hate to tell them that. Sorry, we, we can't. You know, we would really like to allow for that if it's possible. And that it be limited to quail, deer, and pheasant. Well, um, and turkeys. Yeah, but, but I really think the deer, to be quite honest, I don't expect we'll do commercial deer hunting on our property at all. Um, I feel like when I said deer and turkey, <coughs> I'm talking about if we were to do something like a wounded warrior project, mm -hmm. that would be. In my estimation, the only time that I would not be a pay anything. Um, I don't want commercial deer hunters on our property. I don't think it's a good idea. And we don't have the sustained population to, to have that in the farm. Right. Final remarks? No. Thank you. Thanks. All right. And then I will close the public hearing. And uh, if, uh, is there a motion? I'll make a motion that it be accepted. That there be a hundred foot undisturbed vegetative buffer around the perimeter of the property. That the core zoning be specified to the requested uses of recreational hunting. Commercial. 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 Yeah. Hunting, fishing, and, uh, and lodging of eight units. Uh, that uh, the the, the lodging be no more for the eight day, seven days. Uh, that there be no artificial lighting uh, allowed. Um, and I'm trying to think of the proper way to say that. Well, you say no, no shooting after dark. No, well, no shooting after dark. That covers you whatever, whatever time it is. And no commercial skeet and trap. Yes, no commercial skeet and trap. Brian? And I'll second it. The kennel would cover, right? In the carbon now? Yes. Okay. As long as you changed your to 464. 464 point.
Hey, make sure that says that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Please add that to it. I might suggest that the, the add to the motion that those were all, I understand, all agree upon conditions. As to the record. Second, are there any other questions? Request for other conditions? All right, hearing none, uh, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your hand. Opposed? Thank you so much. All right, thank, thank you, you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. I'm sure you won't have any problems. I'm, I'm sure you won't have any problems. But if they step outside of these, then you can certainly go forward with the new Yeah, it's a better closer. Okay. Mrs. Bailey, be sure to call the commissioner if you have any problems. <laughs> created about 10 years ago, created something called the General Aviation Entitlement. It is a funding that is given to airports like Harris County to use on capital projects, and it's $150,000 a year. So we could do a capital plan where we did nothing, did nothing, did nothing, did nothing, and every year there's a $150,000 check that would, would be um, applied to that and, and be reimbursed for it. If we use that 150000 for another capital project, that balance would then push um, and farther down on the timeline. So uh, if I owe you $633,000 and uh, the, I, I can either give you the 150000 to pay back that project, but if you say, well, I want to buy something else, I want you to buy something else from me, so now I owe you another $150,000, and that balance does not go down. Yeah. So we get $150,000. Where do we get the money? <laughs> the money comes from the government. I understand, yeah. but I mean, I've, I've just I'm just wondering. But if they owe us $150,000 a year, do we get a check for $150,000 a year? If we're not projects. If, if, you, if you're doing more projects, you're adding to the balance. So forget Andy. Forget Andy. Yeah, okay. We've we got six hundred thirty-three thousand dollars that the government owes us. If we do no other expenditures where we expect some reimbursement from the government, then it will take four years, four and a partial year, or into the fifth year yes. to re at one hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's why it has accumulated that we have not received. That we have not received. Not received. Not so we have to wait for the years to go by, and then each year we get one hundred fifty thousand. And there is some work that the airport consultant has to do to request that money. And but since the projects are already approved, it's we're not waiting for approval, we're just waiting for the check. I got it, I got it. And I don't know whether that's a specific time <laughs> each year or whether it is due with our request the to Federal the fiscal year starts on October the on October 1, and there is a pre-application process. Uh, and, and this this plan, the purpose of this plan is so that the state is aware of what we intend to ask for so that they are prepared. Uh, for, for those funding requests. 
So let's move ahead and say October right. 1. So has the request gone in for our $150,000 for this next fiscal year? Yes, yes, it has. And we've gotten what is called a tentative allocation, or a TA, from, from the feds and the state. And they said, look, we're going to use, we, we, we want to fund the fencing project. We want to fund the uh, runway length justification study. Uh, and the... 310 and 11. 310 and 11. So three, the, the, that's right. The remark the runway and the, uh, the, the reseal of, of the taxiway. They are going to fund all three of those projects using the $150,000 that, that would come from the federal funds plus funding uh, at, at the 75-25 split out of the state funding an additional about ninety thousand dollars. So two hundred and forty thousand yes. will be coming and we now will that money be applied, you know, they consider we're paying for it in this coming year or will they pay us first the uh, the six hundred and thirty three and what we spend here rolls forward. So, so this number that's down here, and if you remember this is a timeline, what this is showing is a running balance of you're getting the 150, okay. but you've done more work. So the, under this plan, pr proposal, okay. it would push it up to 692, but then buy down in the following year because okay. you're not doing it. are not doing anything. And then the following year, there would be a very limited done, so it would buy down some more. Um, so it, it really keeps running forward, uh, and, and we keep getting 150,000 plus some extra for depending on the project and, and the submissions. Okay. So we're talking in. Uh, yeah. 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 Or we talk five years. No, actually we. There's a whole nother, it goes all the way up to 2027. Yes, sir. So um, the the out years are where the uh, the major development for the runway extension and the expansion are. And, and commissioners, you know, we have not committed to those funds. No. This is this plan is changeable as, as we go through it. If we want to move something farther out or move it closer in, we have that right. But it's just. From, Rough planning purposes, more than anything else. So if we get out in four or five years from now, and we say no, we want to completely be out of out of this, and then we can delay. It. Yes, and it, it was quite fortuitous to have the book break because I was able to to pull up the original plan so I can better answer your question. In the previous proposal, the in 2019. The additional projects would have been a four hundred and fifty-three thousand dollar expenditure. In twenty twenty, it would have been an additional seven sixty-one. In twenty twenty-one, it would have been one million seven hundred and sixty thousand. In twenty twenty-two, an additional two point two one five million. Uh, so it would have put. Uh, a spending of six point five million dollars in twenty twenty three. That's just too big. Yes, and only the hundred and fifty go against all of those planners. Are there are some additional funds or not? The as I was talking about the runway length justification study, that is the key to all of these mm -hmm. funds down here. If we can justify and we have the growth that we anticipate will come, there are, there is something called discretionary funds that the FA has that is based on number of airplanes, the demand, uh, this justification will help that. Those funds will come into play. Right now, they're not. Um, so we hope by investing here, we can, can achieve grants out there. All right. And as you mentioned earlier, this is a living document just because you submit it to GDOT on your path doesn't mean it can't change. Well, it gets and, revisited every and, year. And new, there, there may be a, a sinkhole developed, heaven forbid, 
uh, in the middle of the ramp. And we have to add an unforeseen project that, that was unanticipated. So that would, then we would have to adjust uh, those timelines. So, you know, this is, uh, we, we intentionally didn't laminate anything. In fact, I have markers if, if the discussion was, why are we doing something in one year versus another? I think Jim had to see a lot of that uh, where we were rebalancing both the project need and the available funding uh, to, to manage that through this timeline. What the attempt has been to done is over the last, let's say, 10 years, uh, is to bring the airport from, I mean, 15 years ago, I, 12 years ago, Calvin wanted to do away with the airport, retake over the land, and uh, the effort, you know, Harris County stepped up and said, if you don't want to take over the airport, if you want to do away with the airport, we'll take it over. Well, at that time, it was a constant loser. <coughs> it brought no taxes to Harris County to speak of. It had six, six planes built, or eight, ten years ago. He okay. Uh, that, uh, you know, and it was running, a, you know, every part of it was a deficit. You know, now we're basically working our way close to even as far as, you know, what, what we're coming out of it. We have, each year we get more personal property tax out of it because when you put a quarter of a million dollar plane, which is a small, insignificant plane, you know, you pay, you pay, when that is hangered there, we get taxes on it. We now have one of, uh, of a large, a fairly decent, sorry, I call it a large jet, but uh, it's not really. Uh, you know, it's there, and that's, that's a good chunk of change. We get to the point where we can get two or three more, you know, planes like that from the Grange or somewhere else because we have operate our operating <coughs> costs to the air, to the owners are much less than they are in the Grange. Then we are going to you know just completely be a profit center. And you talk about and one of the things about airports are oh well you're doing it for this segment of people. Well, yes, you are, but these are people who spend a lot of money, and these are people who, over a period of time, they usually buy houses in the area because it's more convenient if they're running a business that requires an airplane, and they live in LaGrange, and they're going to hang her here, it's easier to buy a house here. And it's about one, about one for every, four, I was told it was about, for every plane, four planes, we have one person move to Harris County. So, I mean, you know, there is an economic justification. You talk about, you know, what can we do to, or to create economic development? This is one of the things. Does it happen immediately? No. But you can, if you watch, each year, you can see we're, we're getting closer and closer. So that was, some people have, the reason I said that was some people say, well, you hear a little, why are you spending money on this? And that kind of explains it to so people do what you're saying. So that brings me to the point of pushing these projects so far out is that detrimental to our economic development of the um, use of the airport? The, the intent is to find that right balance. Um, the, 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 there is both a, a sequence of the projects. We have to acquire the land before we can, can begin to construct. We have environmental impacts that have to be studied 
before before we can actually uh, begin moving any dirt. Um, the the detriment comes where you are constraining the growth of the airport because if, if, if you have airplanes that are leaving because you haven't accommodated the, their arrival. So that, that is the risk. We've, we've done in the master plan a growth trend and so we can see right now we feel that this is doable without doing detrimental harm to, to the potential for the airport. Yeah, and another, another fact is we don't have, I guess there is in there somewhere for another tea, tea hanger or something. Yeah. Yes, sir. But that is driven kind of by demand. If, if we get uh, people, <coughs> enough people on the waiting list so we've almost got it full, then, then that's that it's time happens. that we might want to bring, move that up and yeah. do it. So. I just think we have to keep that balance, as you say. I think you're right. We don't want to push so many projects so far in the future of that. We get back to that. Well, that should be in a deficit. It's important to remember that things don't get cheaper as, as it takes long. So the farther you push it, the more expensive it is. When you get to, if we move ahead with the expansion of the runway to 6,000 feet or mm -hmm. so, hopefully that's what, that, that far out it probably should be. That's a big 20, chunk of money, but we still only get paid. There's some funds that come in, but still most of that is going to be then at the 150000 a year. Given, given what we know, yeah. um, this is very much an under-promise, over-produce. Yes. Uh, it, it, uh, we hope that as things grow, we'll be able to get discretionary, yeah, discretionary funds funds. above that. But I think so it would be the unrealistic to, to promise that. Okay. So for 2019, the current year we're in now, that's budgeted, we're going to be doing the um, fencing phase two. Yes, sir. Next year, right. when state funds become available. Yes. yes okay. So there's no urgent there's no urgency there. As state funds become available in next year, next March or April, we'll be beginning phase two. Yes. Okay. Just make sure everybody understands. And then acquire the property. Um, we I'm ready to go into executive session to discuss that. Yeah. Whatever the board wants to. Um, number five, the runway justification study. That that is key. Without that, <coughs> nothing else uh, flows. Um, and the justification study might come back that we're not justified for an extension. Or it might come back we're justified for 5,500 feet. Or it might come back 6,000 feet. We won't know until the study's done. But once the study's done, then once grant money becomes available, we're ready to pounce on those grant opportunities. Without the justification study, we're not ready. Okay. And then... By doing that study, are we then looking at moving the lengthening of the runway significantly forward? Toward the west. No, no, no. I'm going to... Yeah, to the west. Yeah, to the west. Yeah, to the west. Sit. And to the west. And to the west. And to because if you look in 2019, we've got in there 468,276 for the airport access road. But that's not, I mean, it's local funding, and so, but that's coming out of T's block. Yes. Sure. So, so sure. we really are looking at uh, 214,000 of the local side to it because we've already uh, allocated that. There are some due diligences that would have to be done. This number nine, the conduct environmental assessment, that is actually by federal law. There is a, a time process. It's a, a public notification, public hearing involvement through that. And it, it looks at both environmental, flora, fauna impacts, uh, uh, cultural resources, environmental issues. So that would have to be done. And that's an 18 month process. So. You can't just pull it up and say we're going to start moving dirt in 2020. Uh, if we're looking a year to um, to pay the runway, so if we do the extension, oh, to do the extension, yeah. it's now in uh, 2025 20, 20, or 2027. Yes. 
to me it seems that that it's premature to go into the next year or two for something that far out. That there would be a significant, could be significant changes that they may have to be redone or updated to an extra cost. The environmental assessment. The, there, there is a timing to, to all of it. You're right. They, an environmental assessment is good for five years after it's completed. So we don't want to do things too soon. That's why we're doing the justification study now, which is the justification study is, involves polling airport users around the, the other metropolitan service areas, other airports, and finding out if they would use Harris County Airport. That then forms the basis that we go to the feds. Uh, they review the documentation. It's, it's a very defined process of the justification. And they say, yes, you're justified for, for moving forward, or we really don't see that, that demand there. Then you can then take the next step. So, What kind of time period does it take to do that justification study? Uh, I, I think to get the approvals, it's six months. So that one really can be pushed out a little bit further too then. Um, yes. I was just thinking to yeah, budget wise. If you, if you buy you this, yeah. push it that way out, then yes, the yes. environmental assessment does not need to be done. Or the justification. Or the justification. Yeah, justification, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the environmental assessment, which was 100000 yeah. you, you, you wouldn't be able to get You wouldn't people. be able to get the funding to do the environmental assessment until you do the justification. Right. Assessment. That's how I'm in it. It was like the key. So, you know, it, it seems 15. like 2025 is a long ways away, but it's tomorrow. In, in, in oh, airfield yes. world, it's not it's that far off. So, we probably need, do need to go ahead and keep it in that time. And thinking about that as well, at the end of November, applications for fiscal year 2020 funding are due. So, we're November 2018 for. And also in 19, the creditor's budget is runway remarking because we've been dinged by the by the by the, by the state of having runway markings that are very poor in, in condition. They, they're becoming illeg illegible and faded. So that needs to be redone, and that's uh, for and that, this year. That you got in this year. Yeah. Yes, sir. And uh, pavement maintenance, which is a crack seal yes. operation, also <coughs> a number of uh, so that's the only thing we have budgeted in 2019. Yes, sir. Okay. Very good. Good. Appreciate your right. It's hard to make numbers exciting. <laughs> <laughs>
Number 22, restructuring various county roads for safety issues. That's on bid. Bid opening is November 15th. Board consideration November 20. And the public works director, director has prepared a list of 33 roads that, in his opinion, need to restart, uh, restructuring. Do you know what the total mileage is? 49. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45